Okay, next I'd like to invite the Colorado DOT. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Babaft Moore. I have been with CDOT for almost five years, but did not join pavement management until three years ago. So I'm pretty new to this. Before I will get to my presentation, I would like to acknowledge the following individuals. Eric Chavez, Coulter Golden for their contribution to this presentation. Here's our agenda, quick overview of CDOT's network. Pavement treatment, treatments and life expectancy, allowable pavement treatments based on highway categories. Pavement preservation, what is it, why we do it, and how are we doing it? I will be doing a general overview of, instead of being specific as to what treatment we are using for preservation. Next is quality assurance and trainings, and then if we have time, we could do Q&A. So CDOT has about 23,000 lane miles. 17.8% of that is interstate lane miles. The map to the right is CDOT's engineering regions. So we have five regions. Denver belongs to region one. My area of responsibility is region three, which is highlighted in green. Majority of our pavement is asphalt. 12.4% is concrete. This table right here summarizes the type of treatment categories that we have in the life expectancy. Surface seal, we're expecting about five to seven years. Ultra thin, seven to 10. Minor rehabilitation, 12 to 15. Major rehabilitation, 14 to 20. Recon reconstruction. For asphalt, we are expecting about 20, and for concrete, 30 years. CDOT has a policy in place that limits the type of treatment that we can do based on the highway category. So for low volume road, I feel sorry for the low volume roads actually, we can only do surface seal and ultra thin, nothing else. If we want to do more than that, like a minor rehabilitation, we had to do a pavement justification re report for that and have the chief engineer approve that. For moderate volume roads, we can do surface seals, ultra thin minor rehabilitation, and we can still do major rehabilitation, but we have to justify why we are doing that. So the ME design should show that. For high volume roads and interstates, we can pretty much do all, any of these five treatments. So if you noticed in this slide and the previous slide, I highlighted surface seals and then ultra thin. This is what we consider at CDOT as pavement preservation techniques. Meaning we are only doing this when the road is in good condition or relatively in good condition. Meaning it's structurally sound. I have, so what is pavement preservation? I have two definitions here. One is the ASHTO. I know it's 1999, I should have checked the ASHTO definition. But anyway, I have ASHTO and FHWA, everyone in this room is familiar with that definition, so I'm not going to read it. But basically, an example of a preservation activity for CDOT is surface seals, thin overlays, microsurfacing, and anything that does not add capaci structural capacity to pavements. So why are we doing this at CDOT? Why pavement preservation is very important for CDOT? Our goal is to achieve 80% high moderate condition statewide. As of 2017, 20% of our network is, it has low condition. Right now we are finalizing our 2018 condition data and that number is actually rising. We are at about 25 to 
by the time it's finalized. So how, how are we going to bring up the condition of our roads? We really don't have enough budget available to do that. And if we are going to continue to manage our network based on the worst first concept, we will never catch up. Our goal is to be very, very serious about pavement preservation. Unfortunately, there are still strugglers within our organization that still believes that why are we fixing it when it's not broken? Maybe we are the only one that's experiencing that, but it's a very big challenge for us. So our approach is to go out and educate not only within CDAT, but also the public. So at this point, we are actively campaigning for everyone to understand what pavement preservation is, what it will do to our system, and what we are going to miss out if we don't do it. So this is how we are managing our recently rehabilitated roads. We, there are a lot of strategies available to, ma to maintain our roads, but for the purpose of this discussion, I am only going to mention two strategies. So the first strategy is pavement preservation. So surface seal can, act, act, can actually consist of either crack seals, microsurfacings, um, slurry seal, cape seal. But that price that I have right there is the maximum price that we are spending on, on that type of treatment. So it has a 2% um, rate, inflation rate. So we are applying surface seal at year seven, year 14, and year 21. We would love to do it at year five. Unfortunately, we cannot afford it. So the total cost of that whole strategy is about 30 bucks per square yard. And that is actually as of 2016 pricing with inflation rate on that one. And that road is expected to fail at year 33. The second strategy is to do nothing. So after we do a major rehabilitation on a road, we just let it fail to year 17. And at that point, we're going to do another major rehabilitation and let it fail again again at year 34. So it is very obvious that payment preservation is a third cost of the do nothing strategy. This is our default curve that we use in our payment management system. I have two types of regression curves here for strategy A. The orange one is the regression curve for major rehabilitation. The succeeding three curves are for chip seal. For the one on the right, the right of the screen, there's only one reg regression curve there, and it, that is the major rehabilitation curve. Quality assurance. We defined our quality assurance in three phases. First one is during project planning phase. So annually, we go out and talk, talk, talk to our maintenance sections and engineering units to discuss surface treatment projects so that we can identify what their needs are and then incorporate it with the payment management needs. This is actually the best opportunity for us to educate everyone about pavement preservation. So far, we are getting traction, but like I said, we still have strugglers on that one. 
during our meetings with this group, we also discussed with them opportunities to try new technologies. This is where we got the chance to try fiber on asphalt. And two years down the road, we are now incorporating fibers on our, on our roads as part of a, a longer project. During construction, on top of our process control, owner acceptance and uh, independent assurance testing processes, we incorporate, uh, we incorporate incentive and disincentive in our specifications. And then after construction, we monitor the performance of our treatment. This is usually where we find out when we are doing chip seal on time or we are too late. We also find out during this stage what type of treatment is more cost efficient based on the location. Trainings for our testers, we have a certification program in place in conjunction with Co Colorado Concrete and Asphalt Associations. For our pavement management group and material units, the staff for the material, material units, peer exchanges, webinars, meetings like this, we do find a lot of value. So if you guys have trainings available, please let us know and we will be coming. <laughs> CDOT is using Fugirl for collecting data and DTEMS for our pavement management software. We are continually re-evaluating our analysis parameters so that we could take advantage of the computing power of DTEMS. DTEMS is very powerful, but it will only, the, the output that it will spit out is, as, is only as good as our input. That's why we are continu continually uh, reevaluating re that. Other than that, that's all I've got. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk to you guys about CDOT's pavement preservation program. You had mentioned you have a policy on, um, on your, uh, de depending on volume road. Can you, can you describe what a low and a moderate and a high volume is? A low volume road is less than 2,000 AADT and less than 100 AADTT. So moderate is between 2,000 and 4,000 for AADT and for trucks is 100 to 1,000. And then for high volume is anything above 4,000. So yeah, our low volume roads is suffering. So most of that 20% uh, low condition is actually in a low volume road because we can't do anything more robust than ultra thin, which is one and a half inch overlay. Mike Feast, Nevada DOT. So as you allow a lower level of service on your low volume roads, as you, as you allow more failures there, do you find your maintenance crews spending more time doing reactive maintenance there and less time on your primary routes? The advantage of having pavement preservation education piece is that we are actually able to communicate the importance of pavement preservation. So what happened is we are having a trade off. So for low volume roads, we have two lane roads. So it's e easier for maintenance to take care of those roads and the trade off is we take care of the wider roads. We have a policy that says they can only um, spend 50,000 for crack seals and w crack seals and chip seals and 150,000 for overlays. So if the trade, -off, the trade off is if they are able to take care of the low volume roads, they have a longer accomplishment with that money. So we really communicate with each other 
which one, which will take care of that road and who will take care of the other road. The other uh, successful piece of uh, communication with maintenance is that we are able to ask them to crack seal roads for us before we are able to, we, we do chip seals. So we have a really good relationship with our maintenance sections. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, the preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.